Okay. I think we're live in two places right now. Have Instagram up here and YouTube down there. So welcome everyone who's already joining me. Thank you for popping in to this live. Um, I am Shana Searcy. And we're just going to wait a few minutes for a few more people to join us on either platform. So if you're joining me on Instagram, I did pop another camera up here uh, for those who wanted to join me on Instagram. Unfortunately, you are the view that you're seeing right now is going to be the view that you get for the entire live just because I only have so many tripods. I'm sitting in a tripod forest right now. Uh, so the camera that I'm using for my Instagram feed, I don't have a lot of movement on that tripod to get that right over top. So if you want to see the top view when we start, you want to just jump over to YouTube. You can find me on there, um, Shana Searcy Arts, and that camera will be this top camera live right over top of the artwork. You'll still be able to see pretty well on Instagram, but it will be kind of upside down. Um, but if you're with me here on YouTube, you will be able to, we're going to flip the camera so you can see the full layout of uh, what we're going to be painting today up close um, and personal. So thanks for joining me. Thanks. I see Crespo Arts is here, Sylvia in Instagram. Hi guys. Nice to see you. Let me see. And ooh, to get really close to get to my computer and to you guys. But we're going to start in just one minute, just watching others pop in here. Feel free to say hello. Oh, we don't want to hear me. We don't want to hear myself on there. Okay. So, so again, thank you all for joining me on the YouTube stream. If you're here, I'm going to flip that camera in just a minute, but let me introduce what we're doing tonight. Tonight we're going to be painting, I'm doing a four-part series of tiny flowers in tiny glass vases. They are super cute, easy for beginners for sure, uh, introducing you to watercolor. I'm going to go over my supplies in just a minute, but I'll go over the series and what we're going to do tonight. So there are five different flowers that we are going to be painting in five different vases. So different types of vases. Um, oh, Nancy's here from central. Oh, from California. Hi, Nancy. Um, so again, five different flowers. Two of them we're going to do tonight live. I did pick the two easiest ones because being live makes me very nervous and I wanted to make sure I didn't screw them up. Um, so the two easier ones we're going to be doing, you can see here, we're going to be doing our thistle and our rosebuds. And you'll get a better version of these um, in just a moment. And then I also have three other videos that are already pre-recorded that I am going to go through um, these other five flowers. So we have the petunias here. This will be video one after tonight, after the live. The uh, yellow bees will be video number two. And then the last video, um, number three, pre-recorded videos will be the lilacs. Um, so I'll go through each of those. They'll each be released throughout the week this week. So check those out to subscribe uh, so that you are um, getting notifications when those videos go up. Um, but tonight we're going to do the thistle and the rosebud. So I'm going to just flip around uh, my camera for my YouTube folks, Instagram folks. You get to watch me this way and you are kind of across the room. I can see your comments. Uh, hi, Emma. So great to see you. And uh, Sylvia, so great to see you as well. Um, but let's flip that camera around and get started. Oh, Sylvia, I see you found me on YouTube. Welcome. You'll get the awesome camera angle. So I hope I don't make you nauseous as I flip you around here. And then we just got to refocus a little bit. Come on with me. There we go. Perfect. So what we're going to do tonight, um, we're going to do these glass uh, vases. I'm just going to stick this here so it refocuses. We're going to do these glass vases with 
our rosebuds and our thistles. And we're gonna go through those step by step. They um, are very easy. They're definitely beginners, but you can get as creative as you want with these and change it up for as many different kind of combinations of flowers and vases and colors. Um, so that is totally okay. You don't have to do exactly what I am doing. Um, we are going to be using, or I am going to be using, you can use whatever paints uh, you have available to you, uh, but I'll go through my supplies and the colors I'm using in case you want to know. I'm using Daniel Smith and Winsor Newton watercolors. So this palette is kind of my go-to palette that I use. It has the Jean Haynes line of Daniel Smith paints. And for Winsor and Newton, I have my cadmium red, cadmium yellow, as well as uh, French ultramarine blue. And then uh, I also am using Arches watercolor. So these two sheets of, of watercolor paper are Arches. I did use a bigger sheet and cut it up into smaller sheets. Um, and lastly, I'm going to be using my trusty handy dandy uh, Princeton Aqua Elite uh, brush. I just purchased this. It's a size six. I have a size six and a size 12. These brushes have been great to me since I got them about two weeks ago. I've been using them for lots of different projects, but this size six, I'm going to paint every single flower and vase in this whole series with this one brush. So you do not have to buy a ton of brushes. If you are new to watercolor, start with one larger brush, one smaller brush, and maybe um, you could get a mop brush and or a liner. Like those are the only four brushes you need pretty much to do 99.9% .9 of everything you're gonna do in watercolor. And really you could get by with just a large round and a small round um, and do 89% of all the projects you're gonna do in watercolor. Okay, so let's get started. I am going to first start by sketching out. I have two pieces of paper here and this camera does like to unfocus unless I keep something colorful here while it's still white. Um, so I am gonna start by drawing out my first vase and we're gonna start with our thistles. Okay, so let me show you on this camera for my YouTube folks, because this will be the recorded and saved. So we're going to do this thistle. It's a purple vase with purplish blue flowers and these beautiful green leaves. Okay, so we're going to start by very lightly sketching. You can use any pencil you have laying around. The harder the pencil, I'm, I'm using a Ticonderoga pencil. These are like the cherished pencils in our household for schoolwork. Um, my kids will fight you over a Ticonderoga number two pencil. Um, not necessarily the best when you're trying to sketch very lightly, but um, you can really use anything you have. So you're going to sketch very lightly, and I'm going to show you, I'm going to go in here. So the top of our vase is just going to be this rectangle. It's going to kind of be this lip that we have here. And then as we go down, this face is gonna have a long neck, so I'm just gonna draw two parallel lines. And you can make it as long and as short as you'd like, but mine's gonna be about this long. And then I'm gonna draw this kind of bulbous teardrop shape. And I'm gonna do both sides like th this. Rather than going all the way around, I try to make them even on both sides and then curved at the bottom. So you can see that there, that's pretty dark. And I actually was pressing very lightly. That's why these Ticonderoga pencils are fabulous. Cause they have, um, not necessarily for drawing lightly, but for schoolwork for sure. So now I have our base in here and I'm just gonna map out where my leaves are gonna go. I'm not gonna worry about the stems inside the vase. I'm just gonna give myself Kind of a blueprint to follow. I know I want three kind of big leaves off to the side. I'm going to make sure they don't all line up or come out at the same exact angle. There we go. We have our three leaves. Hopefully you guys can see that okay. I'm going to move down a little bit. There we go. Um, and then I'm just gonna draw two stems out to the side, but I'm not gonna draw anything on there for the flowers. Just mapping it out for myself so I kinda know where I want things to end so I don't end off 
end up too far off the page, okay? Again, if you're joining me on Instagram and you want to see the overhead cam, you can hop over to YouTube to find me there, Shana Cersei Arts. Um, you'll get a better view of what you see on the Instagram live feed. But you can just hang out with hang out with me here too and watch me paint from slightly afar. Um, now I'm going to take my eraser. I prefer a kneaded eraser, but guess what? I can't find my kneaded eraser right now, even though I had it earlier today. Ah, such is the life of my art desk. For some reason, I have a place for everything and nothing is ever in its place. So we're just erasing these lines so we can barely see them. You probably can not see them at all on the camera there, but... Um, maybe just a little bit. We want them to be really, really light. All right, we're gonna jump right into our vase first. And I'm just gonna take some of that French ultramarine and a tiny bit, and you can't really see me mixing, and a tiny bit of quinacridone magenta just to get a purpley color and I actually want this to be more blue more of a cool purple than a warm purple okay so we have that really cool blue color now with glass the trick is or the key is and I'm sorry if you're getting a shadow Come on, let me refocus you once I get some stuff down on the paper here I promise it should stay in focus better um, what I was saying with glass, you're going to see that um, the edges of our glass container are the darkest. So when light reflects through glass, glass is going to be bending and refracting that light. But generally, the edges of the glass object are going to be where the darkest shadows are or where the light is being um, absorbed the most rather than reflected. So... We, I'm gonna paint my edge here. Add a little bit of water. I'm gonna go around the curve of the object and I'm gonna leave some white. I'm gonna leave the paper completely white there and those are my reflections. So usually right near where um, glass is absorbing light or that the light is refracting, I guess, through it, um, right next to a dark part is usually a highlight. I don't know exactly why, but if you're looking at glass and observing it, um, that is generally what you see. I'm sure there's someone out there who knows exactly why that happens. So I'm basically putting in my shadows along the edges and just some throughout the body of the glass piece. And now I'm going to take my brush and clean it off with water. And then I am just going to, I'm doing this relatively quickly because I don't want the paint that I painted in for the shadow to dry. I am doing a wet paint on dry paper. So I did not wet the paper at all because I do not want them to diffuse too much. And then the very center of the glass piece, it doesn't have to be, mine is pretty straight up and down right now, but the very center is usually the lightest part. And this is a very loose, easy way to paint a piece of glass. I'm not actually observing anything that is glass at the moment. I'm not painting the exact, um, shadows and highlights that I'm, I see on a piece. I'm just going off of lots and lots of glass pieces I've painted or drawn and observed in the past. So I'm also going to do this lip here. I'm going to make it darkest on one side. Rinse my brush off with water and just let it. And I might go back in and add um, some more 
uh, details. Ooh, this naughty camera. Some more darker details. As this dries, it might get a little too light for me, but for right now, um, I'm going to let it dry before I add in another layer, perhaps in some of the shadowed areas. I am going to add one little layer along the bottom here where it meets what would be the table that it would sit on or the surface it would sit on. And I did that because it, the rest of it was still wet and I wanted it to have a soft gradient going up into it. Um, so I put it in now while it's wet so that it could bleed gently up into the rest of the glass. Perfect, so our first glass vase is pretty much done. Again, I can go back and add some darker um, shadows later on uh, when this piece has completely dried. Sorry, I need to quench my thirst a little bit there. Um, Okay, so now we're gonna go into our leaves and we're gonna do these green leaves. Now the color that is my very favorite color for leaves, all leaves of all time, uh, is not something that every person out there would probably love, but I absolutely love the Daniel Smith um, green, appet green Appetite Genuine, Green Genuine Appetite. Those three words are in the name of the color. Um, this green color is just a beautiful jewel toned green, but it it's desaturated. It's bright, but it's desaturated enough that it looks very natural to be the color of leaves and greenery. It's not too bright, but it's like so richly saturated. I just absolutely love it. And it does dry a little bit granulated. Um, when and separates a little bit, which I think is just a beautiful texture for my greenery. Now, if you're doing, um, you know, super hyper realistic paintings, then this might not be the paint for you. But let me just turn off. Hold on one second. I'm gonna turn off this light and see what we get because I feel like we're getting a super shadow that might be too dark. Hopefully you can still see pretty well. Now I look like a mad scientist up here on my Instagram feed because the lighting is terrible up top, but it looks great down here on the page. Okay. So let's get this green in there. It looks very dark right now, but let me add some water. And as this color dries, it's absolutely gorgeous. So I'm not going to paint this in just completely one solid color. I'm leaving some highlights in there along the ridge, along the center of where um, the ridge of a leaf would be. Oh, good, Nancy. Thank you for chiming in on the lighting. It looks good. Okay. So on YouTube, it looks great. On Instagram, it definitely is a little dark. So those of you on Instagram, so sorry. Uh, it's a little dark up there, but I look like I'm in a laboratory. All right, so I'm gonna leave this nice and dark at the bottom. I left some highlights in there. Let's move on to our next beautiful leaf. And leaves are great because, you know, I struggled with, with them for a while, loose watercolor leaves, because I really just didn't want to give up that idea of like the perfect leaf with the perfect veins running through it, the one going straight up the center. And um, the more and more I painted them, the more and more I realized if I just let go and let the water make these beautiful organic textures that I would be very happy with how they turned out. If I just stopped trying to control them so much you know, if I want to add a hint of a stem up the center, I want to add a hint of these lines coming out, I can do that. 
This is your very first painting class ever, Nancy. Oh my gosh, I feel so honored. Thank you for coming. Thank you for watching. Well, I hope you enjoy it and pick up your paints. And give it a try, play around. Watercolor is amazing. It is my very favorite medium right now and I used to hate it or just be scared of it, I guess. I don't know why. That was so silly of me. I do hope that, you know, one of the main reasons I do this is because I absolutely love art. I get so much fulfillment and enjoyment out of it, especially watercolor right now. That's my personal passion. Um, at the moment, doesn't mean a year from now or two years from now that won't change, but it gives me so much joy. And I know a lot of people out there, um, they, they want to do things creative. They want to pick up paints and they want to pick up a camera or they want to write that book or that song. And they're just so afraid to start a lot of these things, but, um, but you should just do it. Just start. Even if you're just doing it in your home, privately, you don't have to, you know, share it with the world right away, but just start. I promise you it will bring you joy. It may bring you frustration sometimes, um, but stick with it. Just say to yourself, I know I can do it. Um, you are not going to be a master class on day one. I am not a master class on day I don't know how many days are in 18 years, you know, since art school and even before then. So just do it. Just give it a try. Start somewhere. All right. We're going to move into our thistles. And um, so our thistles are going to be right over here. And these are like the super easiest flower you could ever paint. But they look so great. And they can be put into so many different floral, floral arrangements as fillers, but they can also look super cute on their own. Now, don't worry, we are going to paint in some stems into this um, vase here. It's not going to just be completely empty. But we're going to wait to do that because I'm going to show you how it's going to look different than this stem sticking out um, with the leaves on it right now. Okay. So let's get into those thistles. So I'm going to just mark those out on the paper so you can see where I'm going to put them, but you don't have to mark these out. You can just draw them or you can just paint them. So, but I'm just going to show you kind of where we're going. So they're going to be these cup shapes and I'm going to put one here and I'm going to put one over here. And we're actually going to start to paint this from the top down. So let me show you what I mean by that. So again, I'm going to get some of that, um, that blue. So French ultramarine blue, which is a warm blue and a touch of my quinacridone, uh, magenta to give it a dark purpley color, but I want it to be more blue. All right. So I've made a bunch of that and now we're going to start at the top here. And I just want to make sure. Now my problem is I want to make sure you can see what I'm doing on the camera here, but I'm going to try really hard not to put my hand in my wet leaf. Okay. Um, we're going to start at the top with these strokes and they're slightly curved and I'm going to exaggerate a little bit. So you can see they're all slightly curved towards that bottom. So we're kind of going into that cup shape. So the ones at the top are going to be further apart. And then as we bring them down into the bottom, they're going to be closer together. And some of them are just going to overlap each other. And you're going to be like, why am I still making these stroke lines? They're all, it's like one big glob, but just trust me to keep making as if you're actually touching, you know, if a real thistle, whoops, was here in front of you um, and you were touching all of those individual strands and stroking down along those strands, you're gonna do that all the way to the bottom, okay? And you're just gonna let that dry for now. And we're gonna do the other one. And again, we're gonna start. 
And if you need to make this sound, if you need to go whoosh, 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 while you do it, it helps. I promise it will help you. Hello, hello, all my Instagram folks waving at me. If you're still on here with me, you might have just uh, jumped in for a quick second and then popped back out. But hello, thank you for joining me. If you do want to see the um, top camera that you see here, so you can see up close and personal what we're doing here, you can jump onto YouTube. Uh, this will be recorded, so if you want to catch it later or can only catch a few minutes now, that's totally fine. Sound effects help. Yes, they absolutely do. Someone in the comments. Okay, so our two thistles are done. We swish, swish, swished our way to complete. And now we're going to jump in to connect them to the rest. So we're going to use, again, some of that green. The um, We're going for a dark sap green. A lot of, um, you can find sap green, or um, if you have a brighter green, if you add a little red to it, it will desaturate. You can um, check out some of my videos. I have a color mixing one that tells you all about color mixing and color theory and a little bit about desaturated colors. So you can learn a little bit about that there. But let's connect these thistles. So these are going to be just two long stems swooshed right down. They're kind of these thin, very reedy stems. If you want to have something coming off of it, you definitely can. We're not going to put full leaves on these, although in the wild they do grow with full leaves. I just gave them a few little swooshes off there with the tip of my brush. And then along the base of thistles, we're going to have these little spiky it's kind of like a, a little disc of spiky um, greenery that the thistle sits on top of. If I'm going to paint flowers, I really got to learn the names of all of the parts of the flower, apparently. Ooh. My 10th grade biology teacher would not be happy with me. Okay. Um, or maybe fourth grade biology um, elementary school teacher. It's probably when we learned all the parts of flowers. I should ask my kids if they know all the names. They probably do. Um, all right, so we're going to do that on our second thistle and just kind of give it this resting plateau to sit on top of, of greenery. And now those are done. I can bring them a little closer so you can see a little bit more of the variation in color. Aren't those so pretty? Look at that beautiful green and that beautiful purplish blue. Okay, so the last thing we have to do is just put the stems inside the vase. And I'm still pretty happy with this vase with the, the highlights and the shadows. So I'm just going to actually touch up and add a little bit more of a darker shadow, like right along this edge, not the whole edge. I'm not gonna go all the way down and right here under the lip. of the bottle. There we go. And then I'm just going to fade those out a little bit with some clean water. I'm gonna blend them in. Not too much. I do want it to still say dark. There we go. Man, props to all those teachers out there who are actually teaching like full time like this because I'm already exhausted and it's only been like 22 minutes. <laughs> I give you credit. My husband is one of those teachers and all of our teachers in our school district. Man, you guys are amazing. Oh, I have a farmer. Well, I have the wife of a farmer. So the bottom part of that flower area that this um, is sitting on is called the calyx, I think I pronounced that right. So that's the calyx of the flower. Thanks, Nancy. Um, okay, and then I lied. There's one more step before we put those stems in. We have to do our shadow along the bottom. So let's take some of that purple blue. We're gonna just put a 
thin line across the bottom. Okay. Take some clean water, rinse your brush off completely. So we have clean water and we're just gonna touch into that thin line of that dark color and just spread it out here at an angle. Perfect, look at that. Look at how much form and shape that little bit of color along the bottom table gives our piece. All right, and then last but not least, I promise you this is the last part. We're gonna take some of that green. All right, I'm gonna show you. Get my palette all the way on here. I'm gonna take some of that green and I'm gonna really water it down a whole lot. Okay, so we have really watery thin green. And we're going to bring those stems down in here. And they are gonna be a different color, but that's because they are refracting. You know, the light is refracting through that glass. They are, you're looking at them through glass. So they are going to be a little warped. They're going to be a little wider than the stem up top and much lighter. So we drew them in very lightly with that light green inside here. So that also gives the viewer the impression that they have gone into the glass and are now um, inside something. They're not exactly the same as the things that are on the outside of the glass. And then if you want, you can also even just drop in a few drops very lightly of clean water on top and it just gives them more of a hazy look. So those are our thistles. Two colors, well, three colors we used all together, French ultramarine and quinacridone uh, magenta to make this purpley blue. And then this gr um, green uh, aptitite genuine, which is a Daniel Smith color. So very simple palette to make everything you see here. And now we're ready to get into our rosebuds and the rosebuds are even more simple than this. So let's switch out our paper. And just remember that this is a recording, so, or will be recorded. So it will be up on YouTube. If you do wanna follow along at a later time and go a little more slowly, you can pause the video throughout um, and, you know, take your time with it, especially if you are new. Let me see if I can fix the lighting a little bit. Probably not. Like I said, this is my first live. I do a lot of pre-recording with lighting during the day, which is a lot easier because I can fiddle with everything without being live on camera. So I can get my camera to stop bouncing. All right, so hopefully you can still see that pretty well on there. Wait, turn this light back on, but it does give me a shadow. So we will play with the lighting a little bit more for next time. Okay, come on, mister, let's refocus. Get your attention. You get to see my very dry skinned hands. I live here in the Northeast in the US. You know, we have some folks, someone was here uh, Sylvia was here earlier. She said it's 1 a.m. wherever she is right now. So I don't know where she is in Europe somewhere, I think. Would be 1 a.m. Um, so let's see. We're going to draw in this vase. This vase is going to be a little bit of a different shape. So just breaking it down, this vase is completely made out of three rectangles. So a lot of people are intimidated by the drawing aspect of some of these projects. These two are really simple and they don't, they're not drawing heavy, but everything that you draw can be broken down into simple shapes. And you just have to force your brain to remember these are simple shapes. And when I put them all together, they make a complex thing, but they still are all simple shapes. So for instance, this is one rectangle here. I'm gonna do a long neck, which is basically a rectangle here. Oh, I should draw it a little, little darker for you guys. A rectangle here, and then it's gonna sit on top of a larger rectangle. You could even use a ruler to draw this stuff if you felt like you needed that. And then all you're gonna do is start to refine those lines. So this one at the bottom is gonna be a little curved. 
where these meet, these are going to be curved at the neck and then the edges are gonna be curved. And then we can erase this line right in the center here to give us our bottle shape. Super simple, right? Okay. Oh, hi, Carol. Thank you so much uh, for the compliment on that color palette on that last one. Simple color palettes um, are my favorite. They tend to have the most kind of bang for your buck when you keep it really simple and just really play into the, to the colors and their um, kind of natural beauty when they're combined together. Excuse me, I need to take another sip. For those of you on Instagram, yes, this is wine. I know you can't see that on the pre-recorded video, but it's Sunday night. It's the end of the week. It's the saddest part of the day or the weekend where you realize Monday is coming. Um, so I have a little wine here in my QBC, which QBC stands for Quarantine Book Club 2020 Wine Glass. Uh, what a better time, you know, can't think of a better time to start a book club than during this quarantine period of the last year. All right, so let's get into the rosebuds. So we're gonna do the same thing with our glass vase, except we are gonna do green glass. So beautiful green glass. I'm gonna mix up some of that Daniel Smith, that Appetite, Appetite Genuine green, but I'm gonna add a little bit of blue to it. So I'm gonna get a turquoise green. Here, and let me bring this on camera. So you can see what I'm doing here. So I use that, um, this green here, you can see it's a very dark green. And then I added a little um, blue. Actually, I'm gonna use some phthalo blue, which is a very cool blue. And I get this really beautiful, uh, very warm, or I'm sorry, very cool green turquoisey green. Okay. So that's the green we're going to use for the bottle. Now it's not going to be that dark because we're going to add a lot of water to it. Again, we're going to paint in, let me make sure we're in focus here. We are going to paint in our shadows. So we're going to start around the edges. And I always kind of start in this corner every single time, no matter what. I'm just noticing that now. So I start in this corner I leave a highlight there, kind of between the edge and the middle. And then this ridge here, this is, if it was an actual object, is kind of rounded um, along this edge. So I try to make that a little bit darker. And then again, working pretty quickly, I'm gonna get my clean water in there and start to blend this out. But I want it to blend out kind of streaky. You know, I want to leave some areas that are, are still bright white and then other areas that have very light color or medium values and then other areas that are dark and have that dark shadow. So again, usually along the edges on glass and you can just look at glass and observe it and I'm not painting from life here, I'm kind of making this up out of my head, just trying to give the impression of something that's colored, like it's a colored piece of glass, but reflecting light. So leaving in some of those highlights, so bare white paper. Oh, I really like this one. I think I'm gonna have to add a little bit more here. And I always add some right along the bottom at the end, so it kind of bleeds up. See how it's bleeding up? The bottom of the bottle is always very dark. The glass is usually the thickest there for obvious reasons why you know a container would be thickest on the bottom. The part that you sit down over and over again gets the most wear and tear. And then we'll go back in and add that shadow later. But 
I really like this color, like super like it. Even better than the, um, the original that I painted. It just came out so lovely. All right, so I'm gonna do this lip again here. I'm gonna leave a shadow kind of right at the base of that lip. And the lip of a bottle is usually quite thick glass, so that is gonna be darker. It's not gonna reflect, ref, reflect or reflect, reflect, reflect or refract light as much. See some people popping in and popping out on Instagram. All right, this highlight is just a little too light for me up here. I'll fill that in. All right, I'm gonna let that dry and see what it looks like uh, when we're done. So let's get into those little rosebuds. These are another super simple flower, but really, really easy to um, use as fillers in a lot of different floral things. They can look super cute on their own, which I'm gonna show you right now. I'm using, um, for these, I'm gonna be using, I'm gonna be cheating a little bit and using Opera Pink from my Daniel Smith line. And I'm gonna show you how, oh my gosh, I hear my son downstairs. I hope you can't hear him. He's like playing some video game and got very excited about something. All right, let's see here. Let me see if I have some scrap paper. Hold on, hold on. Of course, when I need scrap paper, I can't find it, but when I'm trying to clean up, there's scrap paper everywhere. All right, so this pink in its natural state, when I really like just take a whole bunch, a glob of it, is like, it even looks red on your camera, but it's like neon pink. It is like bright, bright, pink. Okay. But when we water it down, it's the most beautiful, like pale pink. All right. So a lot of people ask like, oh my gosh, your watercolor palette is so messy. Like how do you not clean it out every time? I never wash my watercolor palette. That is valuable paint there. When you need a clean spot on your palette, you just find a spot where there isn't a lot of paint and just wipe it off. Okay, so now I have this little clean spot I can put my pink in. And I'm just gonna water it down, water it down, water it down. Use way more water than you think you need. All right, and now when I paint it, you can see here, it's this lovely pale shade of pink. So for our roses, all we're gonna do is we're gonna put a bouquet of roses up here. If you really are nervous and you want to plot out some um, points where you're going to put them, you can. So if I put a dot here, but I don't draw them, don't draw them in, because your paintbrush is like the exact shape of what these flowers are going to be. And it's just gonna be more erasing lines and like being frustrated that your pencil lines are showing through. So I'm gonna put one there, I'm gonna put a dot here. Try not to make perfect patterns. So this is like a perfect pattern of five. Um, you know, it has like this nice cross you know, throw in one like over here and maybe one sticking up up here, okay? Make it very organic. So if you need to do that, you can, but again, remember to go in and erase those dots so they're barely visible on your sheet. Otherwise you will get frustrated that you can see your pencil lines. Some people get really frustrated. It doesn't bother me. I often forget to erase mine. Um, as long as it's not on the commissioned piece, that I really didn't want those lines on, then I'm okay with it. But um, yeah, sometimes I just turn it into a pen and ink drawing then if, I, if I'm really frustrated with the lines. All right, so rosebuds. Tip of your brush down, you're going to basically just spread out your brush to form this little petal 
shape. So tip of your brush down to the flat of the belly of the brush, which is the thicker part. And I'm just bringing it down to make these little kind of like arrowhead-ish shaped, teardrop shaped, leaf shaped, all of those shapes are the same shape. And I'm just going to do a series of them, kind of all spread it out. You can even make one like, um, you know, they don't have to be perfectly teardrop shaped, have a little line coming off. And it's almost like a suggestion of a petal coming out from the bud, okay? So don't make them super perfect. You could even leave a little bit of a white center, you know, highlight in the middle of them. See how I did that there? And I'm actually going crazy in terms of, I did not follow the dots that I originally put down. These I really like to be organic. I just put them all around. You don't have to cluster them too closely together because we're gonna put some greenery in there that is going to be, um, the greenery is gonna kind of fill it out. So you don't, you wanna leave some room for that greenery. All right, back to our, the, um, warm green that I use, which is the green, the Daniel Smith, that green appetite, appetite genuine. Um, but any warm green that isn't too bright will work just fine. All right. So we're just going to draw on the tip of our brush, these thin stems, and I'm just going to touch it to my green is not very wet. I can add a little more water to it. Um, I'm going to touch the tip of the green to the rosebud, okay? And it's gonna bleed into the rosebud a little bit. For those that are really wet, still it is gonna bleed in, that is okay. It gives us this beautiful wrap around organic look of the stem coming up and the rosebud kind of just peeking out of this, you know, the case of the, um, of the flower. Now I didn't mean to touch the top of that one. I was trying to get as close as I could. So no big deal, I'm not gonna panic. I am gonna throw another one right up here just to fill in that space. So where I got the green on top of the pink, you see there, I'm gonna rinse my brush off completely. That flower is still very wet. So it'll be no problem for me to go in with some clean water and just pluck that green out. There we go. You can also use a little piece of a tissue. Um, and even this one, if it's like too much green in there, I'm just going to push it back down and be like, hey, buddy, you, like too much. Get back down there. And then you can go in with just a little more pink on top. And just you're basically pushing it back down towards the base of the bud. And this one, too. Out of control, out of control. And that's okay, don't panic. Go in with your clean brush, soak up some of that water. And again, you can also go in with, I know I have some paper towel or some tissues here somewhere. Oh, I see other people popping in on Instagram, checking it out. The full view you can see on YouTube, but um, if you're just here to say hi, then hello. It's Chris, Steven, I see you guys in there. Hey, Chris. Uh, oh, a whole bunch of other people just kind of popping in and popping out, and that's great. But if you want to see the full video, it's recorded on YouTube. It'll be up later, and then this full overhead cam you can see on there as well. All right. And now we're just gonna go back. I'm gonna add a little bit more pink to this one and call it a day. Fixing mistakes is the name of the game, Nancy. I see you. A lot of people get worried um, when they start these projects that they're gonna make a mistake. I make a mistake almost every time I paint a painting and I've <laughs> painted a lot of them. Believe me, if you could see the stack over here, and I'm happy with them in the end. Um, mistakes are part of learning, 
Uh, so don't be afraid to make them because every mistake you make, you'll learn a little something new. Okay, so our rosebuds are in, our stems are in. Oh, I have to add a little bud to this one up here. Let's get you a little friend. There we go. And let that dry. So now we're just gonna add in some greenery and then we're gonna put our stems into our bottle and we will be done. Another beautiful painting. Super easy and fun. These will be, would make great um, little designs for the front of a card. Like if you're gonna do a Mother's Day card coming up, if you're going to um, do any kind of card or small, I really love just tiny paintings that you put in those tiny little frames. They're um, super adorable and fabulous and they add like just a little bit of flair to kind of any room. So these are great little um, keepsake designs. All right, so let's add in, we're just gonna add in some stems which are literally just a stem like we did with the flowers and then we're gonna put, we're gonna use our brush and I'm gonna show you a sample of this. Well, I'll show you on here. You can see that I wrote some notes down for myself. But on here, before I go onto my page, I'm just gonna take my brush, point my tip to the page, press it down and lift up. That's a leaf. Tip, down, lift up. Tip, down, lift up. Okay, those are these tiny little leaves that we're going to be making. All right, so we're just gonna throw in a few stems, one here with just a few leaves. We're not gonna go crazy because these are super delicate little flowers. We have a lot of them in there. We've already filled a lot of that space. Sometimes you get into like, especially when you're doing these little pattern things, I know I do, I just like want to keep making them <laughs> and I just keep going and going. Well, you know what? Just start a new painting, darn it. <laughs> you don't need to throw 5,000 leaves into this painting. But you get into the rhythm sometimes. All right, there we go. Just a tiny little bit of flourish. And... We just have to add in those stems. So just like we did for the last one, for our last painting with the, um, the thistle, we are gonna take that green and we're gonna water it way down. I'm just adding a bunch of water. And putting in, these do not have to line up perfectly. I do my best to kind of judge where they would line up to the, to the stems on top, but really it's just a big jumble of craziness down there anyway. So again, the stems inside the glass are thicker, lighter, and not as perfectly straight. I'm gonna throw a few drops of clean water on top. That'll give it a little bit more of a distorted look and feel. Make these a little bit longer. Streak them down in there. So our stems are in, and then very last but not least, go back to that blue-green color we made for the vase. I'm gonna add a little bit more blue to this. And we're gonna add a dark line of that along the bottom. And we are still under an hour, I'm so excited. All right, a dark line along the bottom where it touches the table. Okay, we have that paint in there. Get our brush nice and clean and dip off some of that water and just touch the edge of that. And blend it out again. There we go, that nice little, I don't like how straight that line is actually. I'm gonna mess it up a little bit, there we go. So that nice little shadow across the table where it's darkest, where it's hitting, touching it, gives it all it needs to add that shape and form and depth. Ooh, come on back. All right, ooh, crack into focus, mister. This camera needs a, behavior lesson. All right, so we have our 
thistle and our rosebuds complete. Thank you so much for joining me for this live paint along tutorial. Um, again, you will find, I have three more videos. One is uploading right now um, for the petunias. And then later this week, the lilacs and the yellow poppies will release as well. So we'll be doing these again. Thank you so much for joining me. For those of you, you who stayed the whole time, thank you so much, Nancy, for chiming in with all those helpful tips um, and great questions. And anybody who joined me on Instagram, thank you so much. And again, you can catch all the videos as well as this one completely um, recorded for you over on my YouTube channel at Shana Circe Arts. Uh, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. That's really helpful. Leave a comment and a like on this video if you enjoyed it and got a little something out of it. Thank you so much, everyone. Have a wonderful evening wherever you are. If it's one in the morning or six in the morning, have a wonderful morning as well. Take care, everybody.